Hello everyone, welcome to the Regional Water Conference. So I have with me another water expert. Her name is Ms. Zaygham Habib. Let us ask her a few questions. Ma'am, you've just attended the discussion and we talked about the Indus Water Basin Treaty and people said that it needs to be revitalized. Either we make new policies, either we make new treaties or make amendments in the old ones. What is your opinion about this? Uh, okay, thank you for asking this question. I think the Indus Water Treaty we signed in 1960 and we have uh, more than 50 years experience with this treaty. And uh, there are some lessons uh, learned from this treaty. It was uh, uh, appreciated all over the world as one of the successful treaty. And I think even that appreciation has uh, some upstream bias because uh, the treaty was successful when India was uh, working on the Eastern River. And the Eastern Rivers are fully diverted now. And now there's the uh, issue of Western River. Uh, so in this context, I think there are uh, few uh, specific issues uh, which uh, we should uh, address as a as an impact assessment study before we talk about new treaties and uh, try to find out uh, what are the real gaps with this treaty. Uh, for example, we divided the rivers. We, uh, the treaty basically said that India uh, is entitled to use whole of the water of Eastern River and Pakistan will use the Western River. That approach was not a basin level approach. It was just opposite to the basin level approach. So upper riparian always have more uh, flexibility to divert something from the upper side. Then as a lower riparian, you cannot stop upstream water. The second, I think, gap with uh, this treaty was that it considered only the uh, only river flows. We didn't uh, think about the population growth. We didn't think about future population usage. We didn't think about drinking water uses. For example, TT says that uh, upper riparian can use some water for agriculture, but it didn't say uh, it, uh, it, it was not expected by Pakistan that what what will be the real quantity of that water. So now, uh, if we are facing some shortages um, in the base water flow, I think uh, in Pakistan, the reason is uh, not only agriculture but also the population upstream using water and which is a uh, daily use of water, permanent use of water. So I think uh, uh, there are a few gaps in uh, TT which can be addressed. And for Pakistan at this uh, point, the, uh, the major issue is to analyze what we have uh, got uh, and what type of impact we have had, including the environmental impact and also to find entry point where Pakistan can talk about uh, revival of this treaty, for example, uh, environmental flow, groundwater management, uh, household water uses, these were not a big concept in 1990, uh, 1960. But now all these concepts are important. Do you think Pakistanis at this stage, at the personal level, individual level, community level, or maybe at the federal or the provincial level, have they realized the importance? Do they know how to effectively manage their water resources? It's, it, it has become a complex question and complex answer also because uh, the main water use system in Pakistan, the biggest user of water agriculture, it, it was designed for the minimum water use and it's called scarcity by design. But with the passage of time, uh, there, has, there is very uh, large gap in water use efficiency in different sectors and different regions because uh, we have developed uh, new water use patterns, uh, even the cropping pattern, which is not water efficient. And we have used, uh, also developed new water use sectors. For example, the urban water use in Islamabad is manifold more than a small city. So we have very big uh, inequitable uh, water uses at the sectoral level, regional level, and then the individual water users. The, you know, the water users, uh, for, for them, water is one of the input for their economic modeling, for their economic output. So what they are doing is trying to optimize their economic output when they have water scarcity and when they have resources. But it, within that use, for example, water use in agriculture, they also have some other limitations which are not linked to the water. But the water use efficiency at the farm level vary in a huge range. Uh, if we go and see the productivity of water at the farm level, which uh, we are not normally considering in our planning, 
there is a large uh, variation in that productivity and some of the farmers are at the international level of uh, water use productivity. They are getting very uh, good value of water by optimizing groundwater use also. So I think the water use efficiency, the major issue is that we learn from the good practices. We try to address different area and different issues uh, in, uh, very specifically and uh, uh, not, not in a very general way but very specific way. For example, water quality in some area uh, didn't allow some of the crops which we are doing uh, using now. And we are using very very high delta crop where we have uh, already water logging, which is in the which in uh, finally uh, decreasing the our water use productivity. So I think the, in the for the water use efficiency we have to work uh, at the micro level and uh, many different uh, uh, many different aspects of water use. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much.